to Jamie. Brick on. Dick on. <laughs> Is his name really Dick on? That's, that was the joke <laughs> of the episode. Hey, what's going on, guys? Welcome back to another Game of Thrones reviews. Um, and today's episode, I think, was one of the best episodes of this season so far. On Twitter, basically, everybody was, I can't breathe. I can breathe now that the episode's over. So what's the most popular thing that's coming up? Uh, you know what? Pretty many people are kind of upset about one thing, that the episode was actually seven minutes shorter. I thought it was amazing. I think what they lacked in screen time, they made up with that battle. I think it's because out of the first three episodes, it was building up to basically what this episode had, which was the action, the war. Well, when I was looking at Twitter, Miss Arya Stark said, Sansa is big mad that all her siblings leveled up while they were gone, and all she got was a little finger. <sighs> And a, and a new hairdo. She did. She learned how to braid. She's got the hair, the Cersei do from season four. Well, her whole family was going through their trials and tribulations throughout the whole world, while Sansa was just chilling back at the castle every single season. No, chilling. Whoa, whoa, whoa. She was in King's Landing. She was getting married. in a castle. She was getting married to dwarves. In she a was castle. getting raped by psychopaths. In a castle. Was this the first time that we saw Arya be that much of a badass? Like her, that fight sequence, though, was crazy. Yes, but when she poisoned literally a whole army inside the castle, we didn't actually see her do anything though. But this that is the was the first time that her skill was like it's never been displayed in quite this way. She fought in a in a fair and nice way, you know, somebody who is known to be impressive versus her having to go in and just like slit some throats and run off. Sansa looked a little jealous. Getting back to, to your point, I think last time we heard Arya fight was when she went to the pitch black room and you heard the sword fighting, but they didn't show anything. I wonder, like, maybe this is the point where the actress has finally been trained to a point where they feel comfortable having her on screen fighting. So they took four seasons to train her how to fight on screen? I think it's more about the character development. You know, she had her master over at the castle in the south, mm. but her character wasn't supposed to be here yet. I think what brought up the most exciting point of her knowing how to fight, at least her character, it's the style of her fighting. It was uh, beautiful. It's not a run and gun, here's my sword and I'm gonna slash you up. It's she'll do her thing and then the whole confident hand behind the back, let's go again. Which is sort of a theme in this episode, even when we do continue to the battle. You know, hey, we fight the way that people fight in Westeros. Wait, what are you doing? Do we want to talk about a weird conversation between Bran and Littlefinger? What the hell Bran said to him that we rewound to hear? We couldn't yeah. figure Can it out? Can I just say that I'm happy that Bran has a wheelchair? I'm <laughs> finally... Okay, so if Chaos is a Ladder was in fact Bran's response to Littlefinger, to me, he called him out and Littlefinger's like, oh crap, you know that how much of this I was behind. Well, because well, it's all about him having more power. Well, what's weird is how much is Littlefinger putting the pieces together thinking, holy fuck, this family, other than Sansa, is fucking strong and it's gonna be like hard to like screw them over. They might be a threat to me. Skeptical Desi said, Jon Snow and Theon meeting was a disappointment. I was really hoping for Jon to give Theon the same beating he gave Ramsay. I had similar thoughts. I really wanted him to at least punch him. Trying to be the bigger man, I guess? I don't know. I understand why he would be pissed at him. I don't think he should have done more because he did end up saving Sansa. They don't know what a coward he just was. And he did ensure that the two younger brothers didn't get killed. When is this character gonna die? You don't think he's still up for redemption somehow? No, when is he gonna die? <laughs> I'm very annoyed that he's just like, I'm back. My sister got captured. I need Danny to go save her. It's like, whoa, 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 she's got bigger things going on right now. If she can get around to it, she will, but it's not like she's gonna drop everything to go save her sister when you just ran away. Yeah, that can't be the priority, but nobody knows. Nobody knows what he did until uh, they find out. When is he gonna die? <laughs> He's alive because you're asking that question. Because people want him to die, because we're sick of him, that's why he's still alive. Now, is it that people want him to die or is it just me that wants him to die? Because I feel like these writers are being assholes. Raise your hand if you think Theon should have been dead. <laughs> he should be dead since two seasons ago. He got something worse than death, though. He was flayed and then he has nothing down there. He did get punishment. tortured pretty well. If it's truly worse than death, then why is he a coward? What is there left to be afraid of? Like I said, he should be dead. When is he gonna die? <laughs> Moving on. 
Bev said, I'm still laughing about John showing Danny all these important drawings and then her being like, okay, cool, but bend the knee? I mean, basically, if a guy was asking a woman as often as Danny's been asking John to bend the knee, there'd be completely different connotations. Well, at this point right now, she still isn't fully invested in the whole White Walker thing. Her priority is to get a hold of the Seven Kingdoms. See, I think her priority is to get him in bed. <laughs> they even were talking in the after thing about the sexual tension. I felt tension. I didn't really feel sexual tension. I was thinking the whole time, like, how does she know he didn't come in here with some chisels and some little colored rocks and make all these drawings to like convince her. It's not a great way because it's not like nowadays where they can like carbon date when these things were made. She's just like oh look some drawings on caves. Did you do this circles. just now? Like, That's nice. And she's got no point of reference for what a white walker looks like so she's like oh look you colored in some of them white with blue eyes. What does that mean? They were really nice with the blue eyes though. That was really creative on the children of the woods. <laughs> these children can draw well as we were saying. <laughs> <laughs> That's all we learned. My question to that is does she believe him? Is, is those drawings convincing enough? Going into well, your comment about bending the knee, it, it, it still leaves a little vagueness there. It, whether or not he bent the knee and whether or not she believes him. Like you said, it's not really that convincing, but on the other hand, we don't know. I don't think that he did in part because of the way he answered when she asked him for advice once they came out. I think he was kind of just like, we'll talk about avoid, this yeah. He wasn't as deferential as it. it was his queen. He would have just been like, okay, <coughs> since it's my job to serve you and tell you. Danny is still so much invested in her own, her own goals right now. I, I think it goes deeper than that. I think the reason why he hasn't bent the knee yet is why Danny's so attracted to Jon Snow. It's because of the defiance. Everyone so far that Danny has talked to has basically, you're the they most- They become charmed by her. Exactly, except for Jon Snow. Do you guys actually think that he bent the knee? Just yes or no? No. No. I'm only gonna say yes because I think the show is trying to fool you into thinking it's a no and that it might be a reveal of like, I'll bend the knee but you can't tell anybody. On Twitter, from Honeycombs, when you just paid your debts but a dragon shows up. Cersei's talking to this iron banker, and he just kept showing up with that if. Like, when the gold gets here, your debt is paid. So the gold's gone, we know the dragon, and better, Danny knows that dragons can get injured, and... Yeah, they, lost, they lost the element of surprise with the whole scorpion arrow. Yes. Now they know to prepare for those. Which I was sad that they got Drogon, but happy that they revealed it already so that Danny could prepare. Yeah. Now the question is, what's gonna happen to, what's her face, the bitchy queen? Cersei? Cersei. Cersei. Yeah, with her and not paying her debts. Yeah, Cersei's in trouble with the Iron Bank, period. I mean, that's amazing. I, I had a feeling that guy was gonna stay there specifically to see like, all right, are you full of shit? Because you've been saying this for a while and... But he was, I think he was legitimately impressed that she had secured all that stuff. I think he was calling her out and saying like, oh, you paid this back real quick. Where's the money? Like you say that you're already paying it back, but where's the money? It's kind of like a gangster, like, where's the money? I'll really put it in my hand. I want to see him break some legs. <laughs> How much will this affect Cersei's ability to continue on in the war in having the upper hand against Danny? That's how she was going to feed her armies. The last couple episodes we saw uh, Danny lose, right? But in this, she not only destroyed a lot of the, the Lannister army, but she also got the gold. So it was her kind of coming up and now she even destroyed the Bravos banker's investment. I could, think it's a good win for Danny. Could Bravos send in forces to they can from King's Landing to get their money however they need it. They're more likely, in my opinion, to just offer aid to Danny. To say, you know what? You know what? She owes us and she doesn't pay us back. But you, you seem like like a you know a good person. You seem like you'll give us what you owe us. And you and happen so to need ships right now. You happen to need a couple of like, extra things. But isn't there some conflict though with the banker and Danny at her? In Marine? They were saying that the bankers might not like Danny because she disrupted the slave trade. But if they see a profitable opportunity, I don't think they'll turn a blind eye toward Danny. I think they'll, they'll go for it. All right, so somebody uh, calling themselves Tyrion Lannister on Twitter, at GOT underscore Tyrion, said, when a girl flies in with an itty bitty waist and a dragon in your face, you get burned. That was a pretty amazing moment. This is something that everybody's been waiting for. You rarely actually have something hyped up for so long and it really makes you happy and doesn't let you down in any way. I mean, when you heard the, the pounding of the hooves coming over the horizon, we definitely thought that the dragon would come first. The dragon didn't come first. It was all these horses. Jamie and Braun were like, we can do this. Hold the line, hold the line. And then the dragon came and was like, nope. 
nope, not gonna happen. And even Bronn looked at Jamie and was like, get out of here. Go back to King's Landing. You should go. So I guess my biggest question is, now that the surprise that these dragons can now get injured. How will that affect their side against Danny's army? Because now on the during the biggest battle, the battle that we're all waiting for, Danny can get more prepared of holy shit, they have a weapon that can hurt my babies. Do you think he'll have like dragon armor? That's what I was thinking. That'd be awesome. See, I think the whole reason why they, they did this was to make you think that like maybe Quiburn and Cersei made a mistake by pulling this thing out already. Now Danny's armies know about it, and that's their only weapon against dragons. But maybe it's like they have other things, and that's what's really gonna hurt the dragons. I think it gives us a gauge, though, you know? It, it might have been more effective if it had gone, like, straight into the throat or something like that. We know, like, it, it went in and it went in good, but it didn't, you know, get its heart or something. It didn't tear off its wing. I felt like it took the wind out of them. Yeah, <laughs> we could sort of say, this gives them a gauge. We can do this and we can make it even bigger and that could kill a dragon. But the fact that Danny's armies know about it now, it could be like, all right, these, these are the, the dragon weapon scouts. Your job is get in there and find these weapons and take them out. Take out whoever's manning them and make sure that this doesn't happen. I could only imagine that battle is going to be so epic because now both sides kind of know what each other has to offer. So they're just going to up the ante. Is Jamie dead? Of course not. I don't think so. He's sinking because he's wearing heavy armor and he's only got one hand. But Say Bronn's that. down there with him. I presume Bronn. Either Bron? that or Dick on. Dick on. <laughs> <laughs> I really thought that was going to be Jamie's last moment, but I figured like, that you just can't let him go like that. How much of Cersei's forces was this? How big of a blow was this? This is who Danny had expected to face, have the Unsullied take care of over at Casterly Rock. So True. this is the bulk of their fighting men, of the Lannisters fighting men. But not necessarily the King's Landing forces. This is the Lannister forces. Yes. So it, it is a really significant army, but it's not everybody. Did the Tarly dad die? I'm fascinated by this character. He keeps popping up in weird places with weird motivations about, like today's was all about, what was it, whipping the farmers to make them give food faster, and the end of the line's going too slow. Can I go back there and whip them so they walk faster? Like, he's a weird ass guy. He I had to know. survive that whole thing then. Are we saving him so <sighs> Sam can kill him? Because that would be kind of fun. Gosh, imagine. <laughs> Did you notice Tyrion's know. face? He looked like he was kind of on the fence with... Not Jamie! <laughs> yeah, I mean... No, people were talking about it. There, there was an excellent one saying, you know, Tyrion is looking at his brother going, run away. And the audience is going, run away. And Jamie kind of looks at the dragon and goes, I'm going to run at that. You fool. <laughs> Don't do it, you fool. Oh shit, you are a fucking fool. I personally am worried about where Tyrion's head is at. He was watching people be killed who he knew after being yelled at about, do you think maybe your allegiances are to your family? And at a time that he doesn't know yet, but his siblings may be more inclined to take him back because Jamie does know that he didn't kill his son. Well, there's still the point that Cersei will not take him back because of that prophecy on her. There was the prophecy released a couple seasons ago where it said that her little brother was going to kill her. And everyone is assuming that that means Tyrion's going to kill her. Oh. But then there's the hidden fact that she's actually a few minutes older than Jamie as well. I think Jamie's going to kill her. That'd be cool while they're doing it in I bed. I think Jamie's going to kill her. Making another weird well, incest what? son. Oh, doing it in bed. <laughs> I don't think he's going to kill her during sex, but I think he's going to kill her. Well, with that said, thanks for tuning in. Um, please like, comment, and subscribe down below. <laughs> I don't know what that was. I'm Carlo. You're under attack. I'm Allie. Jasmine. Nick. And we'd like to hear your thoughts about the this week's and next week's episodes. Anyways, see you guys soon.